Hey guys, Justin Chicken New here from the North Charleston District event and the first South Carolina district. I'm here with Robots Garage 4451. I'm here with Caleb, Ethan, and Cole. Today they're gonna to talk to us a little bit about their wrists, their elevator, their vision, and their control system. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. All right, and we're going to get Cole to start us off with this, all right? Yep. Go ahead. All right, so our robot for Vision actually has a few things about it that are a little more interesting. So. We've got our four April tag cameras. They're just thrifty cams, thrifty cams with some different, uh, what should I call it, lenses on them. And you can kind of see there, they've got the lenses. We've had to hot glue all of them to keep them from unfocusing when we take on and off, as we call them, the caps of shame. But these four cameras give us our position on the field and they're especially helpful right when we start so that we can like adjust the start of our autonomous. But once we have our position with these cameras, it's actually this little baby over here, this Oculus Quest VR headset and we use that to help determine our position on the field. What? Yep. And right, that's- You wanna talk about the Oculus? Cause that's, that's sick. Yeah. So uh, on here, there is a program called QuestNav and that it scans the area around it. We had to like bring it out and walk it around the whole field during calibration. But once it's scanned that area, it can give you a global pose estimate that is very accurate. Like it is, arguably more accurate than the cameras and that's why we have it on there that's right i, I saw y'all out calibrating it i thought you were just walking around <laughs> yeah, yeah just, that's just that's waving it around it. that's awesome all right cool but yeah we use that to sort of help correct our global pose and just make it a little easier for our guys in the behind the glass to help score right on well what we got next uh joel's yes absolutely so as the driver of 4451, uh, in conjunction with our software team, uh, our goal every year is to make controls as easy as possible. So um, what we have this year is called uh, kind of like pose correction, essentially, with all the faces of the reef. Uh, normally with any swerve bot, you would have to steer. Um, but this year we don't. We have some automation that automatically aligns it uh, to the reef. So all this year, um, all I've driven with is three buttons. I have the main joystick, and then both the bumpers, which align me to the poles. Now, if we want to play algae, for example, it's just one trigger. But all the software we have in the robot, whether it's the elevator or the drive base, makes it incredibly easy. So when you watch some of our matches back, you'll see the robot and when we drive it around the field, and you'll see it snap. All that is automation. There's no steering in this robot that I have to manually input. Um, human player, same thing. There's no tags as all our cameras face forward, but that global pose that comes off the Oculus, we know where we are via that. Um, all these things combined with some of the automation in the elevator, uh, we have about a three second cycle time. So there's really not a lot of guesswork we have to do. Uh, I'm gonna hand you off to Callahan to talk a little bit so, more. Real quick though, you, you only got one driver? Uh, no, just... so we have a driver and then we have an operator. Okay. So the driver is just responsible for the location of the robot on the field. That's right, all right, I okay. do. But you've only got three buttons. Correct, yes. It is super easy to drive thanks to our software team. Because we like to keep, uh, we got to keep our head in the game, right? So right. if we're fiddling around with alignment or, oh, this is wrong, um, we're very, we're less efficient. So even our intake sequence, which I would normally control, is all automated. We have a zone in front of the human player station. And as soon as we get within X number of feet, it automatically turns on. Stuff like that just kind of makes my job a little bit easier. Right on. Yeah. That I was trying to minimize controls, but the driver still has like strafe and steer and all that. That's yes, wild. Awesome. It's, it's exceptional. I love that. All right. Let's move on to uh, elevator and all that. So my name's Caleb. And so we have a pretty simple pivot and elevator this year. It is a um, passive top rollers and uh, powered bottom rollers. And we have a can, or a can, a, can, range. can range. My bad. Can range. To, 
it's just a very um, it's a better bean bread if you if you call it. So we have we have a three stage cascade elevator so we can play L one through four. And for levels two and three, one, two, and three, we actually stay in this position and we just move up. Right. And for L4, we actually move up and we flip our pivot over because of the way the poles are for L4. Okay. So with two and three, you're actually shooting at it instead of on it. So when we shoot at it, it's easier when it's down and we flip it up because it gives us a better angle to shoot down onto. It. So for L4, we extend all the way up and shoot down onto the pole. And then we have. For algae, we have our gripper that opens. So both of these are powered, and then it just this is just surgical tubing to keep it keep it pulled in. And then when we grab the algae, it just opens, and we turn right. and shoot. Passive activation. Yes, sir. Right on. That's, that's about it. All right, well, that is another very clean, very simple robot from 4451 Robots Garage. Probably the best team in the state. Uh, I'm terrible at outros. See you guys later. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu/slash first. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details.